Thank you. We move on to topical questions, and we start with question number one from Gillian Martin. Thank you, President Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what its response is to reports that the UK Government reforms of benefit and welfare eligibility are unfairly impacting on women. Cabinet Secretary Angela Constance. President Officer, the UK Government's welfare cuts are fundamentally unfair and are having a hugely damaging and disproportionate impact on women. Women are twice as dependent on Social Security uh, in comparison to men and 75% of the cuts since 2010 have come from the pockets of women. And new cuts coming into force this month are all the more concerning because in many households women are the primary or even the sole carers of children and of in-work families receiving uh, child tax credits, 87% of them are women and of all uh, the in-work families who are single parents receiving child tax credits, 94% uh, are women. So these cuts represent a massive step backwards uh, for equality for women uh, right across the UK. Julian Martin. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that answer. When it comes to the Tories' appalling policy to limit child tax credit support to two children, unless a woman can prove that she was raped, does the Cabinet Secretary agree with the position of Rape Crisis Scotland and Scotland's Scottish Women's Aid, who have refused to be third-party assessors for this vile policy, along with the many other organisations in Scotland and Northern Ireland who have roundly called for the policy to be scrapped? Cabinet Secretary. Officer, the heinous policy to limit child tax credit support to two children and in particular to the exemption which requires a woman to prove uh, that she was raped is completely unacceptable, deeply harmful uh, to women and their children and is a fundamental violation uh, of women's human rights. There are no circumstances under which it can be acceptable for a woman to disclose she has been raped in order to access social security for her child. And we believe that the UK government it must, as a matter of urgency, it scrap this policy. It's anti-women, it's anti-family and it's fundamentally wicked. So I totally understand the position of many uh, organisations who have refused to support this policy and I very much agree with the joint statement of Rape Crisis Scotland and Scottish Women's Aid who stated the problem is not that organisations are unwilling to change their service to help operate the family cap and rape clause. The problem is this policy and this is what must change. Gillian Martin. Uh, before I ask my next supplementary, I'd actually like to pay tribute to Alison Thewlis, who has campaigned on this for the last two years, and uh, suddenly everyone else seems to be waking up to the fact that this is going on. Given that tax credits are given to working families who are in low incomes, can the Cabinet Secretary give me an assessment of the potential effect this policy might have on child poverty in Scotland and the in-work poverty of women with children? Cabinet Secretary. So, you know, so I would also too like to pay tribute to Alison Thewlis MP who's, very, who's worked very hard uh, and who's worked hard across uh, the political divide to build as much consensus uh, about this much uh, hated policy. At the, at the end of the day, can I say to Gillian Martin, it is indeed uh, the children that will be affected the most. Uh, our efforts to reduce child poverty across Scotland uh, will be made all the harder as the Tories in Westminster uh, continue their assault on the poor. And it now seems uh, that Theresa May wants to continue that assault for another five years. Around £1 billion will be cut from uh, welfare spend in Scotland each and every year uh, by 2021 with a £0.2 billion cut coming from the changes introduced uh, this month alone. The respected Institute of Fiscal Studies estimate that a three-child family will lose, on average, £2,500 per year, while families with four children or more will lose £7,000 a year, and four million families across uh, the UK will see their entitlements fall. And by 2021, 50,000 households uh, in Scotland will be impacted uh, by the two-child two cap on child tax credits uh, in, in Scotland. So the impact uh, is massive. The, the reach is far and wide. So there's no doubt that Tory policies uh, will push families into poverty and into crisis. So it's no wonder uh, that they scrapped their, their child poverty targets. Adam Tompkins. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I wonder what exactly is the decision here that the Minister dislikes? Is it the decision to restrict 
child tax credits, a decision that is widely supported by taxpayers right across the country, as I think we'll see in the forthcoming general election? Or is it the, or is it the decision to make a number of exemptions to that policy? And if it's the former, the Scotland Act, of course, ensures that this Parliament has the power to do something about it, either through the top-up power or through the power to create new benefits. So does the Cabinet Secretary intend to use either of these powers in this instance? And if not, why not, given her rhetoric on the matter? Cabinet Secretary. Well, there's nothing like a bit of rhetoric from the Tories or indeed a bit of deflection from a policy that is anti-women, anti-family yeah, and absolutely yeah, fundamentally yeah. Uh, wicked and a policy that violates uh, the human rights yeah. of women. And I think it's always interesting that instead of standing united in this Parliament to oppose a much-hated policy, that the Tories instead would rather stand up and be apologists for it and yeah. defend uh, a yeah. policy that is anti-women, anti-family and fundamentally yeah. wicked. And they always expect it's always wonderful that Mr Tompkins expects the women in this parliament and the women in this government to clear up the mess of his yeah, government yeah. and he always expects and he always expects this government to mitigate the mistakes eh, of his government and he expects this government and this parliament and the people of Scotland eh, to pay twice because whether it's the 15% of the social security system, of social security spend that's in the process of being devolved to Scotland, or indeed the 85% of the social security system that will remain reserved. We are all entitled to expect a social security system that is fair and a social security system that does not penalise uh, women and children. And of course, this policy isn't just wrong for women and children in Scotland, it's wrong for women and children uh, right across the UK. And if the Tories intend to save £12 billion from these cuts, so they should pass on to Scotland uh, our share of these savings so we can make different choices yeah, yeah. and make our own choices that are based in dignity, fairness and respect. Claire Baker. Uh, thank you, President Officer. Uh, the family cap will push more women and children into poverty and the rape clause in it is an indefensible policy that does not belong in a civilised society. We are seeing strong opposition to these reforms, which reflect the anger there is towards these changes. Um, Gillian Martin talks about the role of third parties and the strong stance that's been taken by women's organisations. Can I ask the Cabinet Secretary if she can confirm whether or not guidance will be issued to public sector and what the expectation is in terms of compliance in Scotland? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, I thank Claire Baker uh, for her question. As she probably knows from the contribution that the Health Secretary made on radio this morning, uh, that we are opposed to health care and other staff and specialist organisations being used by the DWP uh, to implement uh, their policy. For the reasons um, I've outlined already, we are concerned uh, about the proposed third party assessment model. Uh, we have grave concerns that no suitable uh, infrastructure uh, or training to support the implementation uh, of the policy have been put in place uh, by the UK government and there is no, um, and neither does it appear uh, to be forthcoming. And it's also very important that we don't expect our healthcare professionals to act as gatekeepers uh, to uh, the benefits uh, uh, system. And, of course, uh, the Chief uh, Medical Officer uh, has advised that she uh, cannot agree to disseminate uh, guidance because she wants to seek the views of the professionals that are expected uh, to act as approved bodies. Uh, she wants further information uh, about unintended uh, consequence. And, of course, there's the, the widely publicised letter uh, from the RCN uh, to Alison Thulis uh, that has also raised many concerns. Question number two, Liam MacArthur. Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what his response is to recent comments by the Children's Commissioner on protecting children from physical punishment. Mr Mark MacDonald. Uh, the Scottish Government does not support the physical punishment of children. Uh, we have no current plans to introduce government legislation in this area, but we'll caref consider carefully the Members' Bill, which we understand John Finney intends to introduce. Uh, we continue to support positive parenting uh, and recognise that physical physical punishment can set children the wrong example and is not an effective way to teach children discipline. Lee MacArthur. Uh, can I thank the Minister for that response? It's perhaps worth reminding the Chamber what Tam Bailey said at the weekend. He told the Herald newspaper that his failure to see the law changed on justifiable assault of children was, quote, the biggest re regret of his eight years as Children's Commissioner. It sets us apart from practice in most civilised countries and has led to sharp criticism from the United Nations. 
We all share the ambition for Scotland to be the best country in the world to bring up children. Does the Minister believe we can justifiably claim such a, uh, an ambition as long as we maintain the practice of physical punishment? Minister. Well, uh, as I've stated, the Government doesn't support uh, physical punishment of children and we take forward an approach that is about uh, positive parenting uh, and ensuring that parents uh, feel confident and empowered to take forward different approaches uh, in relation to discipline of their children and uh, evidence from the Growing Up in Scotland longitudinal study which the government uh, carries out demonstrates a significant shift in attitude towards uh, the issue of physical punishment among parents in Scotland. But as I've said the government does not have any current plans to introduce legislation in this area but we are aware that that Mr Finney will be taking forward a Member's Bill and the Government will give careful consideration to that Bill when it comes to Parliament. Lee MacArthur. Thank the Minister for that further uh, clarification. Uh, obviously one of the criticisms uh, of proposed legislation is that it may seek to criminalise parents or unduly interfere with family life. I believe this is misguided. As with the ban on smoking in public places and smoking in cars where children are present, uh, brought forward by my former colleague Jim Hume, this is about changing culture and practice. Does the Minister um, agree that when Ireland recently introduced a similar change in its law, this did not result in parents being criminalised or being una unable to control their children? And would you not accept that introducing equal protection against assault could help reduce the physical abuse of children in this country? Minister. Of course, the... Um the area of legislation to which uh, Liam MacArthur refers in Scotland predates both he and I uh, being in this chamber. I believe it was legislation piloted through the Parliament by I think, Jim Wallace at the time, who was the Justice Minister. Um, and there was much debate that took place uh, in Parliament at that time around uh, the uh, position that the Scottish Executive of the time was taking. Uh, we uh, will always pay close attention to international examples and uh, the experiences of other countries um, and as I've said already uh, and I repeat once again the Government will give consideration to the bill that John Finney is bringing forward uh, when he uh, introduces it to Parliament. John Finney. Thank you, President Officer. I, I hear everything that the Minister says, and, and certainly Mr Bailey's comments are a welcome contribution to our debate. And the Minister will be aware of growing support for the equal protection of children from assault. Is the Minister able, and I note the, the, the detailed comments he's given to my colleague Lee MacArthur, is the Minister able to indicate, because he did cite international examples, what priority the Scottish Government gives to the very clear position the UN has taken on ending the physical punishment of children, please? Minister. Uh, well, the government uh, gives uh, consideration to the findings in relation to the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child, uh, and there is work taking place across government to look at how we can ensure that the uh, principles which sit behind the UNCRC uh, are taken forward in a Scottish context. That is the work that continues to go on across all portfolios in government, uh, including my own. John Mason. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. I wonder if the Minister can reassure a uh, families that they are a key part, the key part of our society and that parents are the key part of their children's lives and perhaps you can give examples of where the government is doing to support families and children and parents. Minister. Uh, well, uh, the government absolutely uh, has the aspiration for all of Scotland's children to have the best possible start in life. And uh, we believe, as I said to uh, Liam MacArthur, that the way in which we do that is to ensure that we have parents who feel empowered and confident to support their children uh, as they grow up. So uh, the government uh, takes forward a, a number of different strategies, the national parenting strategy uh, being the most obvious in relation to that, but also as part of our children and young people uh, and families early intervention fund, uh, we awarded uh, £14 million to 116 organisations supporting children, families and communities across Scotland. Uh, from within that, around £4 million has been allocated to organisations who specifically work in the area uh, of parenting and family support. So this government uh, is committed to ensuring that parents across Scotland uh, have both the support and the advice required to ensure that they can make uh, positive impacts upon the lives uh, of their children and be a positive support to them as they grow up. Douglas Ross. Thank you, Presiding Officer. The Minister will know that in the past Scottish Conservatives have raised concerns that a smacking ban would criminalise parents. It seems the ban introduced in New Zealand has not been wholly successful and the Minister did say in response to Liam MacArthur that the Scottish Government is considering international examples. So can he advise Parliament what lessons the Scottish Government has uh, drawn from the smacking ban in New Zealand, particularly relating to false allegations and the risk of criminalising parents? 
Yes. Well, I think uh, I wouldn't seek to single out any one example as being uh, indicative of what may or may not occur in a Scottish context. But I think what we can do is look broadly at international evidence. Uh, Liam MacArthur has cited Ireland. Douglas Ross has cited New Zealand. We can look broadly at international examples uh, and determine what the right approach would be for Scotland. This government currently takes the uh, position that the right approach for Scotland is to promote positive parenting strategies. Um, but nonetheless, we are aware that Mr Finney intends to introduce legislation and we as a government will obviously give that careful consideration once we've seen the detail of it. Monica Lennon. Thank you. Given the convincing body of evidence which shows physical punishment of children can have long-term negative impacts on a young person's mental health and well-being, can the Minister tell me how he plans to work with the Mental Health Minister to address this issue? And what action is he taking to ensure that the long-term impacts of physical punishment will be considered for, as a factor in the rollout of the 10-year mental health strategy? Minister. Well, as I mentioned earlier, in terms of our responsibilities in relation to the UNCRC, we take a cross-government approach in relation to that, looking at how each of the different portfolios interacts with the requirements of the United Nations and Convention on the Rights of the Child. Um, in relation to Monica Lennon's specific point around the mental health strategy, uh, we are also going to be taking forward a children and adolescent health and wellbeing strategy, which will very much tie in with the mental health strategy uh, and its long-term aspirations. So uh, we recognise, and I cited that in my initial answer to Liam MacArthur, we recognise the negative impact that physical punishment can have. That's we, why we as a government take a very firm position that we do not support physical punishment, but the approach we take is around promoting positive parenting, and that's the approach that we seek to advance through the work that we're taking forward and the funding that we allocate. Thank you. That concludes topical questions. The next item of business is a debate on motion 4948 in the name of Neil Findlay on behalf of the Health and Sport Committee on its inquiry into the preventative health agenda. Could I ask members who wish to speak in the debate to press their request to speak buttons now?